this is a um, what a wonderful turnout tonight. What a great way to begin the year. And uh, as you can tell from the handout, I'll be talking to you a little bit about one of the disciplines that we uh, that we exercise, that we follow, and it's fasting. And before I I say anything about that, I want to tell you how much I enjoyed uh, listening to uh, Pastor Tim cast the vision for what the year is going to look like. I was thinking, is it a vision? Is it a theme? You know, well, um, I'm always interested in the dynamics of preaching. And I was listening to him and I noticed something. I listened. I couldn't turn around and, and see faces, but I could hear and it seemed like the, the level of excitement began to get higher as you felt challenged. Does that make any sense to you? You know, why would I get excited when he's asking me to do something, you know? Well, it's because you know, and I know, we all know, because this is something we should be doing. It's, it's something that we need to do. Becoming a, a follower of Jesus Christ, a disciple of His, is something we should do. And, of course, you know, those are just words until you can begin to apply it to some action on our part. And we, we begin to say, yeah, yeah, I need to be doing that. Yeah, I can get excited about this. This is going to bring some change in my life. And so um, I realize that might have something to do with fact that there's a number of people here that are showing up tonight that maybe it wasn't your normal thing to do on Sunday evenings to come and I'm glad that you're here. I, I will tell you we can accomplish an enormous amount with just a few excited people. Are you familiar with at all with the Pareto principle? Is it, raise your hand if you know what that is. Very few people would say it's called the 80-20 the, the principle. And uh, it says basically, you know, 20% of the people, you know, give 80% of the finances. 20% of the people do 80% of the work, that sort of thing. And, uh, and all you need to do is just, uh, when you start getting that 20%, when that 20% begins to grow, uh, th there's no stopping what God can accomplish through us. It's just, it's just, it's a scientific principle. But I want to talk to you tonight about the principle of fasting, but I want to pray before we begin. This is important. I don't think any time we get up here and talk, we should say anything that's not important. And, but this is, this is critical. And so I want to share some ideas with you about fasting. I think that will make it easier for you. Uh, it will motivate you to fasting. In fact, I'd like to, to become a regular part, a routine in your life as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Lord, we're grateful for every person that's here. We're thankful for your presence. We can do nothing without you. We can do all things with you. And so we ask for your help right now, Lord, to be able to get our minds around to absorb, Lord, these wonderful truths, dear God, that have to do with the disciple, which is the discipline of, of fasting and we'll give you all of the thanks for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm taking a key verse from Joel. When I say Joel, what do you think? What comes to your mind when I say the prophet Joel? Day of Pentecost. You know, I, I think that he's famous for that. When you think about, you know, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and Peter's preaching and right away he used the prophecy from Joel. Well, I'm reading from Joel chapter 2 and 12. Now, therefore, says the Lord, turn. Everybody say turn. It's a key word here. Turn to me with all of your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. And... Uh, and so I, I really feel that this is a key to a great start for this year. We did it last year. And uh, I feel that, that those of you who did it last year benefited so much from it. And some that perhaps didn't participate, they say, I want to be a part of that. 
I, I want to be involved in that this year. Fasting, of course, was really a common practice in the early church. You can find it in the 13th chapter of Acts, in the 14th chapter of Acts. And uh, for believers, the, the question is not, should I fast? I say that that's not the question. Well, let's see, should I fast? That's not a question at all. The question is, will I fast? And you're the one, you're the only one that can answer that question. Let's go back to the key verse. The Lord said, turn to me with all of your heart. Now, among other things, I want you to do it with fasting. Being a, a Christ follower really does require turning. And turning. And turning. How many know what I'm talking about? How many find themselves, you know, uh, you know, having to continue to make these turns in your life? Let me explain it a little bit better by saying that by being a Christ follower, you have to be doing this turning. The word for turning is the word in the Bible is repentance. It's a change of mind that brings about a change in your direction. Do you ever feel like you need to change direction? I do. I'm going to say I do quite frequently. I find myself distracted, like, whoa, look at that little object, you know? It's shining. Anyway, well, how did I get here? I got to get back. I got to get. I, I have to make a a turn. It was the same with with Judah. Judah needed a turning, so Joel said, "We're going to do this. We're going to do this together." And we're going to turn. And we're doing it by fasting and other things. Fasting can be, make an enormous change in your life. In the Bible, there is what is considered to be the threefold cord of disciplines. Now we routinely do some of them. Two of them, regularly we do. In fact, I would say that they are routine in our life. But one of them is, is ignored. A lot. Ignored. In Matthew chapter 6, in the middle of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he tells his hearers that when you practice your faith, that you should do it with humility. You don't do these things in order to be seen. Beginning the sixth chapter, in the second verse, he said, when you give, don't sound the trumpet as the hypocrites do in order to get attention. Then in the next thing that he talks about is in the fifth verse, and he says, when you pray, you don't do it out in the open for people to see. Now, those are two of the common things that believers do. But then there's the third discipline, and the third discipline is fasting. I want you to notice what Jesus said about fasting beginning in Matthew 6 and 16. He says, moreover, when? When you fast... Do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have the reward. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward. Everybody say reward. Reward you openly. Notice two things that he didn't say. If you fast. It's not an option. It's not should you fast. You should fast. Second is that there is a reward. That comes from past fasting. Now by that what I'm. I'm I, I don't want to imply that you earn anything. And I'm going to get to how those rewards come. And why they come when we fast. What is meant by fasting, of course, is not just stop eating, because if you do, it's just nothing than a hunger strike. If you're going to do it just for, for dietary reasons, you know, then it's not a fast. When I talk about a fast, as fast is abstaining from food for a spiritual purpose. There are other fasts that people talk about. Some people go on media fasts. They stop the use of their phone. They get off Facebook, things like that. Some people fast from uh, entertainment, you know. Maybe they fast from their, from their video games. 
things, you know. And uh, we set things aside because what we want to do is we want to just focus, focus our attention upon God. And I, I see some advantages to those. Uh, but they will never take the place of abstaining from food. So why, why should we fast if fasting is not a command in the New Testament? The answer is fasting isn't a command, but it is an expectation that God has for those who hunger after Him. It involves depriving yourselves from food for the purpose of having a spiritual feast. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you're hungering for more of God, this is a great way for you to be filled. In fact, the Beatitude says, if you're hungry and thirsting after Him, you will be filled. In the natural, there are people who are, are physically obese, overweight, yet still malnourished. Isn't that true? Eat all the wrong foods. They're starving nutritionally. In our, in our physical lives, we can parallel our spiritual lives. We can come to the table in the church and we can fill up on rituals. We can fill up on programs. We can fill up on man-made traditions. But these don't provide for us the spiritual nourishment that we need. We can go through the motions, so to speak, and we'd be starving for God. Fasting, fasting prepares us for a banquet of blessing. Now, there are three kinds of fast, biblical fast, fast that you can find in the Bible. There were what is called the absolute fast, or times when, when they fasted by not eating food or drinking anything at all. Then there is a, what we consider to be the normal fast, the normal fast is eating nothing but drinking only water. And then there is the partial fast. And that is eating a, a limited diet, like the Daniel fast. We can read about that in Daniel. I wish I had more time to get into this. In fact, the subject of fasting is something that you could, well, you could talk about it for a month of Sundays and never really cover it. But we'll do as much as we possibly can and try to make this worthwhile. And wanting everyone to get a good start, we want as many as, as many as can. As many as can to join us in the month of January. Now some that I've talked to have already chosen, they're going to take the, the normal fast. They're going to eat no food whatsoever. and They're going to participate in this for a period of time. Others are going to be involved in a, a partial fast. And of course, with the, the right motives, okay, we can anticipate that there are going to be, well, there are going to be benefits. There are going to be blessings from doing that. Let's call them again. We'll call them rewards. Let's talk about, let's talk about those rewards. First of all, the, the benefit, some of the benefits of fasting is, number one, is that fasting is, is good for your body. I should say, it can be good for your body. It can be also hurtful for your body if, if you do it the wrong way. And so I want to just talk about that just briefly. It uh, may not sound like much of a reward from God, you know, that you're going to be healthier. But the reality is that God made our bodies, and He made them in a particular fashion. He made them in a particular way. They are, are magnificent instruments made for His glory, and they're made to be vessels that He would indwell, that He would use your bodies for His purpose. And they just work better if they're healthy. And fasting is a way to bring physical health, is one way to bring physical health to your bodies. Because of all of the, well, the things that we find nowadays in food, nowadays, we're talking about additives, and, and so many of them, uh, if they are taken in large quantities or over a long period of time, can be harmful, harmful to your body. Fasting gives the body a, a natural cleansing. Many of the chemicals that we have uh, in our food for preservatives or food coloring or sugar substitutes and, and all kinds of other things that they do with these foods become toxins that are stored in the body. And, uh, and, and the result is that they age just prematurely 
and they're responsible for a lot of other things that are very negative. Responsible for sickness and high blood pressure and heart disease and, and poor circulation and pain and allergies and stress. They affect even the brain's function and more. So fasting, uh, fasting can actually help you to deal with the buildup of toxins that are stored in your body. Now, I'm not a medical doctor. and I've, I've, I've studied this. I've read things. I've watched YouTube videos of doctors talking. And there is some debate with regard to how many toxins are expelled by fasting. But the reality is that toxins are stored in your body fat. And when you stop eating for a period of, of at least six hours, or you cut down on your eating, you go into what they call ketos, and, and basically what happens is you start burning that fat. And when you burn that fat, those toxins then go to the liver, and they become excreted at that period of time. Now, I will tell you that fasting, and, and there's enough study, research done on this, to tell you that you will live longer if you fast. Um, it is one of the things that they do. They do fasting in order to help with things like Alzheimer's. Uh, there are types of cancers that are prevented, or at least it's helped to prevent those types of cancers by fasting. Type 2 or diabetes, you know, is something that fasting helps to resist or, or, come or stop. Uh, and then there is cell reproduction. And I, like I say, I can go into a lot of other things, including clarity of our thinking. Um, uh, fasting also creates an enzyme that stops the production of fat and cholesterol, the negative cholesterol in our body. I won't get into a debate about all of the of health uh, benefits. Uh, I realize that there's more and more studies that are being done on this, but they have proven uh, so much of it to be true with, with, uh, in laboratories with animals, so that's how they know, in addition to the testimony of many people that have fasted over a period of time. But it's, uh, but it's not going to be healthy for you if if there are certain conditions in your, in your body. As an example, if you're pregnant, you, you have to be very careful not to be fasting. I think you can be very, also, you can cut back on certain things that would be helpful to you, but I'm talking about a, a complete fast or a total fast. And uh, in addition to that, if you're a child, in addition to that, if you suffer from, from heart disease, now these are some of the things that you would want to be very cautious about. Um, partial fasts allow the right foods, and this is the beauty of a partial fast, to do the work that foods are supposed to do. See, we are supposed to be eating things that help us to be healthy. And by cutting out some foods and eating other foods in your life, you're actually going to be find yourself letting those foods do the cleansing for you, letting those foods bring the nutrition to you. Fasting gives your digestive organs also a rest, and they do need a rest. If you ever noticed that that sickness diminishes appetite. There's a reason for it, and that is that your body basically needs the energy to be used towards healing. And so rather than digesting food, periodically the digestive organs need time to repair and to maintain themselves. And so now all of this, by the way, doesn't sound very spiritual, I realize. But here's the point, and that is that if I'm healthier, I have more energy, there's more that I can do for God. Would you say amen? The second thing is that fasting results, or excuse me, resets life priorities. There's a prevailing philosophy in the world today that if something satisfies the human soul, that it's a virtue. Now, there are, there's nothing wrong with feeling good. I, I like to feel good. I'm sure you like to feel good too. But not when feeling good becomes your God. Not when feeling good begins to control your life. Food represents things that, that make us feel good, but that also can control our lives, um, like, like uh, comfort foods. Paul wrote to the Philippians about people who set their minds on earthly things, and he said their belly was their God. I'm going to feel better. I'm miserable right now. I'm going to eat. Show me the chocolate. Listen, it's more than a symbolic thing because indulgence often involves eating and drinking. There was a parable. The parable was of the rich man, this rich, foolish rich man, who said, you know, when I get to a certain place in life, this is how I'm going to spend my life. I'm going to spend it eating and drinking and being merry. And what did the Lord say? 
He said, you're a fool. You're fooled because your priorities are in the wrong order. When we stop eating in order to get closer to God, then our priorities become rebooted. Another benefit to fasting is that fasting gets God's attention. How many want God's attention? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Now I realize some people say, I don't want God's attention. In fact, I'm hiding from Him. Well, if you want to come out in hiding and get His attention, this is one great way to do this. The list of biblical fasters in, are like who's who in Scripture. Many of the great, Christian, uh, great Christians throughout history have fasted as a means of getting hold of God. Uh, this is true even when people have little or no relationship with God at all. They say, you know something, I want to get a hold of God. Maybe fasting will help. I think about Jonah going to Nineveh. And he tells Nineveh, he said, he said, by the way, it's over. Just a matter of 40 days and it's done, you know. And so what they did was the inhabitants then began to change what they were doing. They wanted God's attention. They wanted to get God to change his mind. And so the king declared a fast. And uh, with, of course, their repentance at the same time. And you were reading from Jonah, he says, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water. Fasting wasn't, you know, the only thing that they did. There were other things like putting on sackcloth. I don't suggest doing that. Crying out to God. Turning from evil and violence. And it was a very, very violent civilization. And then he said this, he said, who can tell that God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not be punished? And then in verse 10 it says, and then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he said that he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. I, uh, I re recall I talked about this a year ago, I recall a time in my life, really, I think it was one of the worst times in my life since I had become a believer. Uh, there was just something that I was going through, and I, I, needed, I needed help from God. And so uh, I felt God told me to go on a fast. And so I fasted for a, a period of time. And at the conclusion of that, I felt an overwhelming presence of God in my life. I, and I will tell you this. I have never felt closer than that time since. I have not. Now, it might be because I was just so desperate in the need of God, and, and it just made such a big difference in my life at the time. My situation, though, the circumstances surrounding my life didn't change. There were outside circumstances that, that, that were truly really troubling me and stressing me, and they didn't change but all of the depression and all of the stress was gone. And so if, if you're struggling, and you can be struggling, you can be struggling with, with broken relationships, you can be suffering from perhaps sickness or worried, you know, about a wayward child. These sort of things can torment us, can they not? And I find that, that one of the things that you can do I believe will be help for you is to get God's attention. Now, by the way, you don't just stop eating. You know, that's not just the way. You, I'm talking about doing this along with praying. Okay? Get God's attention. Talk to Him. Praise God. Um, then that fourth thing is this, is fasting can, can bring miraculous rewards. Now, all of these things are rewards, but I'm talking about now something that's really very special, something of a supernatural nature. From time to time, we need a miracle in our life. We know that the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. In other words, there are times in our life when, when prayer is just, well, it's just more powerful. I want to go back to Joel now. We talked a little bit about the fact that it was Peter that quoted him when the Holy Ghost was poured out. This is that, spoken by the prophet Joel. But what led up to those prophecies that Joel was giving? Well, there was a famine. A famine at the time of Joel, and, and people were so poor 
because of the famine that they, they couldn't even bring an offering to God. So God sent Joel to Israel with, uh, with a message. And the message, of course, was that 12th verse. Now therefore says the Lord, turn to me with all of your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Again, of course, he repeats something like this a few verses later in the 15th verse. And he said, blow the trumpet of Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly. Now Joel went on then to say that God would do some things when they did that. What would he do? He would cause the rain to come down. He would cause the threshing fulls, uh, floors would be full of wheat. He would cause, cause the vats to overflow with new wine and oil. And that, uh, that they would eat plenty and that they would be satisfied. And that they would know that God was in their midst. And then, he says, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also your manservants and maidservants. I will pour out my spirit in those days. Fasting not only caused a, a miraculous provision, but it also brought about a prophecy. Prophecy of Pentecost. And so, you know, when I think about when I think about the thing that we need many times today, I think that there's a miracle that we need in our lives called deliverance. So necessary today. There's so many Americans today in bondage. In fact, they're in bondage to more things today than they ever have been in history. They are enslaved. They're enslaved to money, to sex, to porn, to medication, to overeating, to alcohol, to cigarettes to drugs, to gambling. I mean, the list goes on and on. Breaking, breaking the power of these things is going to take more than willpower. I don't know. There may be somebody here today that's in bondage to something. Maybe you need victory in your life. Well, I will tell you that fasting along with prayer can bring about the miracle of deliverance in your life. For me, I just needed to be delivered from a depression. You think eating would help you out? It didn't help me one bit. It was when I stopped eating and I took this need to God that everything changed for me. I shared the outcome of that after fasting for a period of time. I remember I was teaching a, a, a group of kids in a, in a in fact, it was right at the house over there in the little den there was a, a group of teenagers and I had a Sunday school class and I literally I would, went in opened my Bible looked at the scriptures and I could see my tears hitting the pages I didn't hear anything that would be perhaps music that would stimulate me you know that would cause me to feel that way it was just where God had me and uh, and so I I remember that, and because of that, it's something that I, that I long to experience and go back to from time to time. I want that sensitivity. Do you want that kind of sensitivity with God? Amen. The fifth thing, the fifth thing that fasting would do for you, fasting will work to help you to know God's will. How many want to know God's will for their life? Oh, sure, we all do. We all do. Another great man of God was Daniel. He went to God with with prayer and with fasting for answers. First of all, it was when King Darius had, had been king. And, uh, and he said, Then I set my face toward the Lord, this is Daniel 9 and 3, to make a request by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. And of course, he repented for the nation at that time. And, uh, and at the time of the evening sacrifice, Gabriel came to him. Gabriel informed him, the word of God tells us, and talked to him and said, Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. I really want you to know what God's will is, not only for you, but for, for the nation, for, for the nation of Israel. 
Daniel received actually more than that. He received prophecies that we consider to be the end time prophecies today. They were the result of his fasting that God communicated with him. Later on in the, in the third year of King Cyrus, this is now the 10th chapter we find in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full day weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. On the 24th day, there was an angel that appeared to him. And he said, you know, from the very beginning, from the first day that you began to pray, pray, I was on my way, but I was met with resistance until Michael came to help me. Again, prophetic word came that was given to Daniel. Listen, if you're looking for direction in your life, if you're looking for purpose in your life, okay, fasting is a sure way for you to hear from God. If that's the motivation. You want to be a follower of, of Jesus Christ, a disciple, then you need to remember that he started his ministry. I want to be a follower of Jesus. He started his ministry 40 days in the wilderness, 40 days of fasting. Many great church leaders, as I mentioned earlier, made an impact on our world, and they did it by fasting. One of the leaders was John Wesley. During the time of the Great Awakening, he so, so, so strongly believed in the power of fasting that he urged Methodists to fast every Wednesday and Friday. In fact, he refused to ordain anyone into Methodism, the, the religion, until they agreed to do it. How important is it for you and me to consider fasting? We need to prepare ourselves for what God wants to do. Have better health, resist, of course, reset priorities, excuse me. Get God's attention, bring miraculous rewards, and know God's will. And so, we're going to be talking a little bit about fasting. Let me pray for you again. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us something. Something that we can do, Lord, in a physical sense. It also has such spiritual import. That it helps us, dear Lord Jesus, to to experience, dear God, more of you in our life. Lord, to get focused upon you, to be sensitive to your voice. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us, dear Lord Jesus, all in our determination, Lord, in our motivation, dear God, to draw closer to you by, by prayer, dear Lord Jesus, but also, dear God, by separating ourselves from some of those things that, Lord, that, uh, that we've relied upon so much in the past. Dear God, so I pray, Lord, that you'd help us, Lord, as a church family to be able to do this together for your glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've got a couple of discussion questions for you. One of them is, what two reasons of the five? I want you to look over the reasons. What two reasons of the five that were mentioned are most inclined to motivate you? What, what two meant the most to you? And then why? And then the other is, what kind of fast are you planning to go on? And why did you choose that particular fast? So why don't you break into your groups and let's have this discussion. I hope that, I hope that you're going to be able to really uh, make it more meaningful and uh, that you'll be able to absorb just a little bit more of what was said.